This video is sponsored by Wondershare and the all-new PDF Element 7. PDF Element 7 features a redesigned UI, advanced writing tools, improved team collaboration features, more powerful conversion tools, a user management console, and more. PDF Element features a super advanced and easy to use editor that makes marking up documents easy. You can also easily add images, highlight text, or sign PDFs directly in the software. And you can even use advanced features like built-in optical character recognition that can accurately turn scanned documents into searchable, editable text. Check out the link in the description to try PDF Element completely for free, and if you decide to buy it today, you can get 50% off your purchase, and thank you so much to Wondershare for sponsoring this video. Hey, what's going on everyone, Greg here, and one of the most frequent comments I've been getting on my MacBook Air and MacBook Pro videos is, which laptop should I get for school? So rather than answering all of these comments individually, I thought I would dedicate today's video to answering just that question. Should you get a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro for college? Okay, and let's start off with one of the most important things for your average broke ramen eating college student, and that would be the price. Now, the MacBook Air traditionally retails for $1,099, where the MacBook Pro would retail for $1,299. However, the good news is that if you are going to school, you can take advantage of Apple's special education pricing, and that would bring the MacBook Air down to $900 $199 and the MacBook Pro down to $1,199. If you are purchasing through Apple, you can also take advantage of Apple's special promotion where they are throwing in a free pair of Beats headphones. I own both the Beats Studio 3 and the Solo headphones, and I find that the Studio 3 is going to be best for school because of the adaptive noise cancellation to block out your annoyingly loud roommates or other loud sounds. And the sound quality on the Studio 3 is actually pretty good, and the best part about them is they're packing the same technology as Apple AirPods, so they feature the W1 chip, so it easily pairs through all of your Apple devices and connects just as easily as a pair of AirPods. And if you already own a pair of headphones or you don't want a pair of headphones, you can also easily sell these on eBay for around $200, saving you even more money on your laptop purchase. But anyway, you slice it, the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro are gonna be $200 apart in those starting configurations. However, in the grand scheme of things, the price of the MacBook Pro or the MacBook Air is only going to be a fraction of the crippling $100,000 of student loan debt you're going to accrue as you go to college. So make sure you pick the right laptop for your situation because in the grand scheme of thing, that $200 isn't going to matter. Sorry. Okay, let's start with the design of the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. They are very, very similar. They both have 13.3 inch displays. They both take up around the same amount of space on a desk. The MacBook Air does have that iconic taper and it gets slimmer as it goes towards the base and it does weigh a little bit lighter, 2.75 pounds versus the three pounds of the MacBook Pro. So in terms of design, they are very, very similar with the MacBook Pro and Air both having two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports. They both have force touch, glass trackpads, which are excellent, and they both have the butterfly keyboard. One of the big differences with the MacBook Pro is that it will have the touch bar on it while the MacBook Air will have traditional function keys. However, they both do have the Touch ID sensor for easy logging into your computer or other applications. And even the speakers on both of these machines sound pretty similar to me. The real difference between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro is going to be in that display. So the MacBook Air tops out at 400 nits of brightness with a true tone display. However, it lacks the P3 wide color gamut that the MacBook Pro has. So you're going to get more accurate colors on the MacBook Pro. Plus the MacBook Pro also does does get brighter, it goes to 500 nits of brightness, so if you plan on using your laptop outdoors a lot, maybe the MacBook Pro might be better for you because of that increased brightness. As for that wide color gamut, that's really going to be beneficial to people who are pursuing something to do with media. So if you're going to be editing video, looking at photos, maybe doing graphic design, and you need more accurate colors, you might want to pick up that MacBook Pro for that wider range of colors. However, both displays do look great, and most people wouldn't notice the difference unless you put both displays right next to each other. Now, this is a video that is focused more on the school side of things. So one of the more important factors about school is that you have a laptop that is portable and is going to last you throughout the entire day. This is an area where the MacBook Air is going to win over the MacBook Pro. It features about an additional two hours of battery life, 10 to 12 hours, versus the MacBook Pro six to eight hours. 
Again, the MacBook Air is also going to be a little bit lighter than the MacBook Pro, so if you throw it in your book bag along with a couple of other books, maybe that weight difference might be important to you. Now, aside from the better battery life and slightly lower weight of the MacBook Air, the MacBook Air also does run cooler on your lap, and it also features less fan noise than the MacBook Pro. So if you wanna go into a classroom, if you're going to other environments and you wanna make sure that you're not distracting anyone in the library, you might wanna pick that MacBook Air over the MacBook Pro. So what about performance? What wins, the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro? Well, this is kind of useless. We all know the MacBook Pro is going to win. I actually did a video covering the different performance measurements of the MacBook Pro versus the MacBook Air. I'll leave it here if you wanna go a little bit more in depth. But basically, all you have to know is that obviously the MacBook Pro is going to perform better than the MacBook Air. It has about double the multi-threaded CPU performance, double the graphic performance, and is just a more powerful computer, hence the name MacBook Pro. But what we really need to talk about is what do you plan on using your laptop for? There are so many different fields of studies and majors out there, so you're going to have to pick a laptop that best suits what you're going to school for. For example, if you're doing lighter tasks, if you're pursuing a liberal arts degree like history, English, journalism, political science, you aren't going to need the fastest chips inside of your computer. And this is where you'll want to look at the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air will run any word processing programs, PowerPoint presentations, or probably in most people's cases, online Google Docs without any issues. You'll be able to write your essays, listen to music, read your books, spend plenty of time watching all of my YouTube videos on repeat, I mean studying with that amazing battery life, and doing all of this with an extra $200 in savings compared to the MacBook Pro. However, not everyone is pursuing a lighter degree like liberal arts or business, and maybe you need something that's going to pack even more power. This is when you're gonna wanna consider the MacBook Pro. So if you are going to school for something more intensive, maybe you're going for computer science, you plan on writing code, any sort of major dealing with media like video editing or music production or photography or graphic design, those kinds of tasks are usually left better to the MacBook Pro. Now, I say usually because of course the MacBook Air can do those tasks, it's just that the MacBook Pro is better at those tasks. And yes, if you are going for development like a web developer, you probably won't need the most powerful laptop out there, but traditionally, and painting with a broad brush, these kinds of focuses would benefit from the increased CPU power or extra GPU power in the MacBook Pro against the MacBook Air. But of course, school isn't all about studying. Maybe you wanna pursue other interests or maybe you wanna have some downtime with playing some games on your MacBook. Now, if the most intensive game you run on your laptop is something like League of Legends, have no fear, the MacBook Air can run that game with no issue. However, if you wanna do something more demanding, then you'll probably need to go look at the MacBook Pro, and if you really, really want intensive graphics power, and you're pursuing something like 3D modeling or something insane like that, you're gonna wanna look at the 15-inch MacBook Pro, which has dedicated graphics cards. However, in this video, we're really just comparing the base 13-inch MacBook Pro to the MacBook Air, and if you're doing anything with that GPU, the MacBook Pro has double the performance of the MacBook Air. So again, anything GPU-related, lean towards that MacBook Pro. Unless you know you're not doing something that demanding, then you can go towards that MacBook Air again. Now, both the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro are going to be fine at any of those lighter entertainment tasks. So say if you wanna listen to music while you're studying, maybe watch a YouTube video, stream some Netflix as you have a bunch of different browser tabs opening as you're researching ancient Greece, the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro are going to do just fine at that. You really don't have to worry about the power difference. What about other things? Maybe you're interested in photo editing or dipping your toes into video editing. Maybe you wanna start something like a YouTube channel. Now the MacBook Air can do those tasks, especially if you aren't doing something like 4K video, the MacBook Air is going to be just fine if you wanna edit the occasional video and maybe try your hand at that. However, if you know you're going to be doing those tasks very frequently, that's when you wanna be looking at the MacBook Pro and that's when spending that extra $200 makes sense. So in conclusion, Apple does a pretty good job describing which customer should get which laptop. If you're going for lighter use, go for the MacBook Air. If you're going for heavier use, go for the MacBook Pro. 
And I'll reiterate, if you mostly run web applications, you plan on only using your laptop for writing, researching, reading, streaming Netflix, watching YouTube, you value things like battery life and a lower operating noise. And let's be honest, who doesn't want to spend $200 less on their computer? you should probably pick the MacBook Air over the MacBook Pro for school. On the other hand, if you are going to be doing something like development, want to compile code faster, are pursuing something like video production, photography, or graphic design, or you plan to relax with some form of gaming, you'll appreciate the extra horsepower of the MacBook Pro over the MacBook Air. Now listen, I know that every recommendation isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. I know there's some people who are watching this video who I said should get a MacBook Air that are going to prefer the MacBook Pro, and vice versa. There might be some people out there who I said get a MacBook Pro, and they value things like that lower fan noise and increased battery life on the MacBook Air, and they're gonna go for the MacBook Air. And listen, I was once a broke college student, so I know that price is definitely an issue, and I know for some of the people who I recommend get a MacBook Pro, they are going to have to get a MacBook Air just based purely on price, and I know not every person out there I'm going to kind of categorize and ultimately you are going to have to decide which laptop is best for your needs. However, I hope this video did help you out in picking a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro for school. So if it did help you out, be sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. And if you have any additional questions on the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro for school, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Also, if you want to support the channel in any way, make sure you check out the links in the description and you can purchase either the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro. It would help the channel out. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.